For the past eight years, the number of Israeli civilians within the range of rocket terror has grown to approximately one million people living under a constant threat of over 10,000 rockets and mortars. In 2005, the Israel Defense Forces withdrew completely from every last millimeter of the Gaza Strip, giving the local population an opportunity to take their destiny into their own hands. Despite this, upwards of 7,940 rockets and mortars continued to be fired at Israel. In July 2007, Hamas took control over the Gaza Strip. In the year 2008 alone, 2,735 rockets and mortars were fired at Israel, leading the Israeli government to order the IDF to carry out Operation Cast Lead. This three-dimensional model is based on intelligence and other findings gathered in the field during Operation Cast Lead. It gives an example of the complex battlefield in which the IDF soldiers fought and shows the way in which Hamas made use of the local uninvolved civilian population as human shield. For the past several years, the Hamas terror organization has been ruling the Gaza Strip supported by Iran and Hezbollah. For this entire period, thousands of rockets and mortars have been fired at Israeli civilians. Hamas invests much money and efforts to build terror infrastructure in civilian areas and underground throughout the Gaza Strip. Hamas has developed sophisticated smuggling methods. For several years, Hamas has been digging tunnels under the Sinai-Gaza border in order to smuggle weapons, ammunition and explosives all supplied by Iran. Hamas has camouflaged the openings of these tunnels under the guise of civilian housing, factories, greenhouses and mosques. Tons of explosive materials, powerful explosive devices, rockets, RPGs, grenades, assault rifles, missiles and anti-tank rockets have all been smuggled through these tunnels and stored in these civilian homes, mosques, schools and hospitals. Hamas built its training camps and placed rocket launching sites, explosive devices and snipers nearby medical centers, schools and other public buildings to gain immunity while taking advantage of the local population as human shields. Hamas used the large open spaces in mosques in order to store weaponry in opposition to international law and has in such a way turned these locations into battle zones. The use of women, the elderly and children is built in the terror strategy of Hamas. Schools have been booby-trapped. The lives of children and youth have been placed in danger. Schools and educational institutes have been turned into rocket and mortar launching sites. In many instances, Hamas deliberately prevented the local population from leaving the areas of battle with the intention of using them as human shields, so as to prevent the idea from hitting terror infrastructure. When an explosive device is detonated and the house is destroyed, Hamas puts the blame and responsibility on Israel for hitting civilians and property. Tons of explosive materials and underground explosive devices were found hidden in the streets. The explosive barrels targeted armored vehicles such as tanks and personnel carriers. These types of explosives were placed close to buildings, including those with people inside, so that the demolished building would also serve as obstacles for the advancing forces. In this example, a building where terrorists were hiding has been hit. This caused secondary explosions in the adjacent building, making it collapse due to the many additional explosive devices hidden inside. In an attempt to gain protection, Hamas positioned its rocket launching sites by public buildings such as medical centers, soccer fields, the Palestinian Association for the Rehabilitation of the Disabled, and gas stations. Hamas chose the place and the tactic of using uninvolved civilians as human shields. This map and other findings are all evidence of how Hamas purposely built its terror and combat network as an inseparable part of its civilian infrastructure. Hamas chose this battlefield. Hamas chose to place its rocket and mortar launchers within the uninvolved civilian population. Hamas chose to build its fortifications and place its explosive devices and snipers deliberately between buildings in which people were hiding.